Hi, Kirk O'Connor here, and today in our WordPress tutorials, we're going to look at the page and the post editor and the fields on there that you have to fill in and how to fill things in and how to add and edit content. So let's go in here on our test theme into login. So we're going to log into our theme. All right, well here we have posts and down here we have pages. So we've talked about pages and posts and the differences in a previous tutorial. So we're going to go into posts. If we click on posts, we now see we have a list of the posts. So let's just click the first one and that's going to take us to show us our editor. Okay, so let's very quickly go through the main things on our editor. Up the top we have our theme name, um, edit post. Obviously if we click this we get to add a new post. Um, across here we have screen options. This is quite important. Screen options, if we click this link, allows us to see some of the options that are displaying or not displaying on this page. Quite often when someone tells us they can't find something such as custom fields, um, the option is not clicked on this page here or on this section of the page. So if I was to click custom fields and let's say click the author information, that would then display. Um, maybe I don't want to see the SEO settings or maybe I don't want to see the post tags. Um, so I could close them out by not ticking them, but let's leave them there. So when we're finished with that, if we just click that up. Okay, so moving down, we have the title of our post or our page. Um, most of the stuff you're going to see is pretty much the same on pages and posts. So I'll only make a comment where something is different. Down here we have what's called the slug and what the slug is is basically the URL of the page you are producing and when you type in your title it will automatically create the URL or the address of the page and it will remove any punctuation you've put in like question marks, full stops, exclamation marks, whatever and However, between the words, obviously we can't have spaces in a web address, so it will insert the, um, the characters there to string those together. And we could change the name um, by perhaps putting that, or if we didn't want to put that, we could put that. Um, so therefore that URL now would show that. However, if someone was going back to find that URL, We've just changed it if they bookmarked it. So perhaps not a very great idea if someone is looking for that to have done that. So good to know though that you can change that if you need to change it. Okay, the next line we have upload and insert. And this line here is for inserting images. We're not going to insert an image. We'll show you how to insert an image in another tutorial otherwise this one will go on for half an hour and then it might just get a little bit too long so let's just remove that moving along the line we can insert a video although videos are commonly inserted via embedding them from YouTube or Vimeo or one of those places so we'll show you that also in another video um, audio once again we'll show you that in a separate one Add media, add media once again, very similar thing. This is commonly used for adding things like PDFs. We'll show you that in another video as well. And particularly on our themes, we use something called Gravity Forms, which is a forms plugin, which creates forms. And this is to add a form. And once again, we will show you that on another video. Moving across to the right here, we have two ways of adding information down here in our um, edit area. One is via visual mode, which is sort of like a, a wisey wig or what you see is what you get type situation, although it isn't 100% accurate. Um, and the other one is HTML. HTML shows you the code. You can see there 
that we have the code for that image that is to the right in our visual mode. Most people wouldn't use the HTML mode, they'll use the visual mode. So we're going to go back and work in the visual mode. Okay, you'll see we have quite a bit of content there. Now, if we come down to the next line, you'll see that we have some pretty standard things that you would have in any sort of text or email editor. Some buttons here, um, some of them are very, very obvious. If we select some text by holding down our left mouse button and dragging and then click the B, well, that text becomes bold, of course. Um, if we did the same thing and collect I, then it becomes italic. So once again, we can move backwards um, if we want with the undo or the redo, fairly common things that you're going to see um, in a word processor slash email sort of editor. Um, if you don't see this second line of icons, normally what happens is you'll find that this little row here has not been clicked. So if we click that little row there which says show hide kitchen sink, you'll see that the second row of icons becomes visible, which is, which is fairly helpful. And once you click that, it should stay clicked. Moving along here, we can create all sorts of things. Um, we can underline, we can create bullet points. If you wanted to create bullet points, um, you all you have to do is to hold down the things that you want to create bullet points with. Let's say we want to create those three sentences or paragraphs, I should say, as bullet points, and then click bullet points. Um, you'll see that once again, they've, they've come into perfect bullet points. So, however, we don't want them to be bullet points. So what we're going to do is we're going to undo that. Um, same for numbered bullets. Um, indenting, we have obviously some text layout, left align, center justify, right align. This one here is quite interesting. This one is to add a link. So the first thing we have to do is once again, select the text we want to create into a link, click our little chain here, and we have to type in our link URL, which is a full URL. So I'm going to set this to, so it's going to link to wordpress.org. Now, normally when you're in your website and you want to send people somewhere else, you don't actually want them to go on the same page as your website. So if I put that into open in a new window, then that will open in a new tab on the browser and um, they won't go away from my website. So there's some align sort of options there in class. Um, some other options there where you can open it as a pop-up, uh, all sorts of things you can play about with and get happy with, but we're going to click insert and you'll now see that that looks like a link. And in fact, if we were to click that link, it will, not in the editor though, when the, when the post is published, that will take us to that particular website. Um, there is a number of other options including spelling, um, font size, paragraph. These two here are very interesting. Um, when you copy in text from a another website or you copy in text from Microsoft Word, that text has behind it and you can't see it, but it has what's called control characters. Those control characters tell the text to do certain things. It might be to left justify, it might be to write justify, um, a, a whole bunch of things. However, when you bring that information into WordPress along with the text, it comes as well. So you might paste some text into WordPress and wonder why the formatting is very strange. So what you would do is copy, let's say from a Microsoft Word document, copy your text, click this button, paste your text into there, and then click insert. And what that will try and do is strip out all of the control characters that come with the document so you can then format the text how you want it rather than how Microsoft Word thinks it should be formatted. Um, the control characters 
between Microsoft Word and WordPress. Some of them will work, some of them definitely won't work because they're very specific to Microsoft Word, so they might cause some confusion. So it's always best when bringing information in from the web or from Microsoft Word to use these little boxes here.